All right. Um, welcome, everyone, to uh, Traffic Calming Meeting 1 for Fairway Drive. Uh, my name is David Greaves. I work for Kimley Horn, who's consulting with NDOT on the Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Program. Um, thanks for being here. This is a, a virtual only meeting. So like I mentioned earlier, um, we're recording this. It will be posted on NDOT's YouTube channel. Um, so feel free to share this with, with any of the neighbors who may not be able to attend today, but, but still want to learn about the program and, and find out you know, what we're doing here. So uh, the first thing we always start off with is just a general introduction to the traffic calming program. Um, begging the question, what is traffic calming? So the Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Program, or NSTC, is, as we'll see abbreviated for the remainder of the slideshow, is a program that focuses primarily on, on residential streets. So there are a wide variety of roads around Nashville um, that you know require a, a number of treatments and, and improvements, but this particular program really focuses on, on neighborhoods. So not so much the arterials or um, you know like large collector roads, but really places that that people are are living. So traffic calming focuses on physical solutions to encourage lower speeds. Um, so striping signs, those are tools that can help, but items that are placed in the road, such as speed cushions and things, those will physically affect vehicles that are, are speeding. And that's NDOT's preference because for obvious reasons, um, signs and stripings can be ignored by, by folks who are trying to go fast, whereas physical devices are a little harder to get around. <clears throat> and the primary goal for this program is speed reduction. So there's are sometimes a little bit of like traffic diversion effects, but that's not really what we're pursuing. Mainly we are hoping to keep the vehicles on the road just going a slower speed than uh, we, we observe them to be going today. So the three E's of traffic calming, this is uh, education, enforcement, and engineering. Education is kind of what we're doing here tonight, reviewing the program, talking about the tools we have at our disposal and, and what we're going for. Enforcement is pretty well outside of, of NDOT's uh, domain. So we really appreciate the help of, of Metro Police Department, but there's no way they can be everywhere at once, uh, writing speeding tickets everywhere. So we tend to rely on engineering. That is uh, one thing NDOT does have control over. So I'm, I'm an engineer. We're here to design a solution for your street that will slow speeds without the need for, um, you know, writing, writing people tickets. So safety and vision zero, this is sort of the, the piece that all of this orbits around. Um, vision zero is, is a plan nationwide that seeks to reduce the number of fatalities on our roadways to, to zero. So that's uh, quite a goal, but any, any higher number of, of deaths than that is, is not a worthy uh, pursuit. So this chart here, this infographic, sort of explains the importance of lowering speeds. And, and that's that the odds of experiencing a fatality, um, if you were a pedestrian being, being hit by a vehicle, drastically <coughs> increase. Um, the faster you're, you're hit. So we can see on the left, a car is going 25 miles an hour. That's the speed that you know most neighborhood streets are, are signed at. You've got a pretty good chance of, of making it. Um, not 100% chance, unfortunately, but you know odds are you'll be OK. Whereas if we're seeing speeds upwards of like 45, that really uh, decreases the odds that a person who is struck by a vehicle is is going to make it out alive, unfortunately. So this is sort of the driving force behind our desire to lower speeds. It's so we keep everyone who's using our roads safe. So 
this is a really popular program. Um, this map to the right here is a map of all of the streets that have applied through the program. It's it's a screenshot from the interactive mapping tool on NDOT's website that we'll show links to in a little while. But there are you know almost 500 streets that have specifically asked for traffic calming, and you know we get to choose 25, 26 of them you know two times a year. So we're we're working quickly, but um, it is a a program that's in very high demand and is is resource constrained. So how do we choose the streets? Um, this pie chart off to the right essentially breaks down the scoring system. And you'll see that you know the vehicular speeds is by far the biggest chunk of, of the pie. We also consider volume. So if you have a ton of cars speeding um, a little bit versus a street with hardly any cars, that, that's another way to, to get bumped up above the, the threshold there. And then we also consider injuries and fatalities for, for cyclists and pedestrians, um, whether or not there are sidewalks or, or bike lanes, that's those non-driver accommodations. And then that last 5%, that's trip destinations. So say there are parks and schools or things um, you know, on the street, then that gets factored in as well. And I, I believe that Fairway Drive does have a, at least one school on it. So that would have been considered during the selection process. Um, so Fairway Drive, this is the stretch from Lebanon Pike uh, down to Maple Crest. So I, I think it continues maybe like a block into a dead end past Maple Crest. That that piece of the street will not be um, in in the traffic calming project, but I don't think that was really identified as a spot there was an issue. And then the street data is uh, sort of some of the numbers that fed into that that pie in the last chart. So the 85th percentile speed, that, that's just a statistical um, metric that traffic engineers use. That's 38 miles an hour. So you all probably observe people do go pretty fast on fairway. Um, you know, 38 is is edging up to that um, threshold where, where people are really getting hurt pretty bad if, if they do collide with a car. And then uh, volume, 3,335 vehicles per day. That's, that's also pretty significant. Um, so you'll have a lot of traffic, but a lot of it's going pretty fast. So that is what's creating the, the need for some, some measures that we're gonna talk about a little later. Uh, you all know where the street is. This is a map. This is fairway here. Um, and this is a screenshot from Nashville's interactive mapping tool. The green roads are ones that have been selected to have traffic calming occur on them. And the purple are streets that have applied but not yet been selected. So if you go on that uh, website a little later, then you'll you'll see there are all kinds of streets around and that's just the color coding and dots using. So before we jump into the toolkit, I wanna just pause and stop for questions, see if anybody um, you know, has anything to share or, or ask. I do have a question about, uh, you know, at the end of the point on Maple Crest, where this is being considered, mm -hmm. we've got a four-way stop. Is that also included in your considerations for traffic moderating um, measures? Because there are a lot of people who do not, who do not stop, who don't even really slow down at that point, and it's right at the edge. It's right on the corner uh, where Stanford Elementary is. Mm -hmm. um, that particular piece of data is not one that helps us decide which streets to select. Um, mm -hmm. We do consider all of the existing conditions when we do our design. So we have a, well, we can talk about the specific concept a little bit later, but that's definitely good to know. Um, unfortunately, we don't really have tools at our disposal to enforce stopping at stop signs. Um, we can mm -hmm. make sure that there's not as much of an incentive to 
you know, use this neighborhood like a racetrack. So speed cushions will help with that. Right. Um, well, there's all, there is also at the other end of that block uh, at Selma and Fairway, another four way stop that is uh, regularly ignored by a lot of people, mm -hmm. people, people coming down from McGavick Pike and then turning either right or left on Fairway. Most of them barely slow down and vision lines are not real good, just as they're not real good at the corner of Maple Crest and Fairway, which, you know, to me leads to, you know, that speeding, which, hey, I'm just going to go right through this stop sign that most of those people are not going to look at a 25 mile per hour uh, speed limit sign and think anything about it. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely speaking to the what we covered a little earlier, where we try to emphasize the physical solutions because it doesn't really matter what you think about the rules. Um, you know, you're going to go over a, a speed cushion whether you like it or not. So right. we try to make uh, speeding an uncomfortable activity. We we don't have a lot we can do that will force anyone to to come to complete stops at stop signs. But um, that's definitely good to know, and, and we can use that as we refine our design. Okay. David, how many people did you say, how many cars, the volume of cars? Uh, just over 3,300 vehicles per day. So how many people are in here from the neighborhood right now? Eight? Seven? Um, looks like that is about right. We've got me and Liz. We're with Kinley Horn, um, Council Member Jeff Syracuse. And sure. presumably uh, the remainder are, are residents along the street. So this is Jim Oldham. I'm sitting in for a couple of other people too that are my neighbors that couldn't uh, be here tonight. I'm, I'm also doing the same uh, for my neighbor across the street and the neighbors next door to him. So uh, I'm sitting here listening in. As I told I'm them also I doing the same uh, for myself and a couple of neighbors as well. Cool. So, um, so we're representing 3,300 drivers right now. Um, that is not necessarily the case. Uh, Should it be the case? You are, you are representing the residents who live along Fairway Drive. Okay. I was just curious about the, the, the metrics there of, of such a small amount of people representing such a large amount of people. Yeah, tra traffic volumes, they don't typically correspond very well to um, people who live on the street. So I, obviously, uh, Fairway does not have 3,000 residents, um, but yes. Uh, do we have any other questions before we move on? Well, I, th I think that basically the unique situation with Fairway is that there's a traffic light at Lebanon Pike and there's another one down at McGavick Pike. A lot of people use Fairway as a cut through. They mm -hmm. use it to come down to either Selma and head toward McGavick Pike or Maple Crest and head toward McGavick Pike or vice versa, go in the other direction using Fairway as um, to avoid going down in front of Kroger and having to deal with that light. So most of the people who are speeding are actually not necessarily residents. A lot of them are, but I think a lot of them are people who are just using that as a um, convenient way to reach point A to point B without having to go all the way down to McGavick Pike on Lebanon. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and and we do see that from time to time, um, especially when you have a road like this that connects to destinations. Um, so that certainly explains the the higher volume of, right. of traffic that you all see. Um, but when we're doing this program, the residents of Fairway Drive are are really the people who will have the input and uh, ultimately decide if if traffic calming moves forward. So I have I have a quick question about um, about the number of pedestrian related accidents that have occurred already on Fairway Drive the past few years. Do you have that data? 
Um, I don't have it in this presentation. I can probably look it up and get back to you. Are, are okay. you aware of, of any that, that you want to? No, that's why I'm asking. I'm, I'm curious to see, to know if, if that data has been looked at and for the fatality rate of those accidents. Yeah, um, ab absolutely. So they, every um, accident over the last 10 years that involve pedestrians and cyclists are included in the, the data that goes into the street scoring. So if, if you did have, you know, accidents on this street, then they they would push you further in favor of, of being selected. Okay. And so the decrease of the speed limit from 25 or from 30 to 25, uh, that certainly makes uh, 30 to 38 look a lot, or 25 to 38 looks much greater than 30 to 38. So is that being accounted for that the recent speed limit decrease was done? Uh, that's a good question. If it, the application was submitted recently, then they, they would have accounted for it. Um, but I'd, I'd have to, again, go back into the data spreadsheet and, and verify that. Okay, I just asked because when I moved here, the speed limit was 30 miles per hour and then it decreased to 25. Got it. And it, and it used to be 40 before that. Fair, fairway drive was, was 40 miles an hour? It was. Goodness. Yes, one this uh, the other one of the other neighbors that's with me says when he was a kid it was forty miles an hour through there. So so my my point in saying stating that is that if you consistently decrease the speed limit but people have become accustomed to a habit or a pattern, breaking that habit or pattern uh, takes time. So um, we're only sitting at about a couple of years I think maybe since it decreased to twenty five, um, and they, we've had almost little to no enforcement out in the area to do anything to, do, to discourage that speeding since it was lowered. So I know you said you can't do enforcement all the time, but there's been literally none in the time that I've been here. Yes, so to clarify, NDOT can never do any speed enforcement. Um, that, that is very strictly Metro Nashville Police Department's uh, jurisdiction. Certainly, we can do our best to lower speeds with the tools that we have, um, and I think everyone can agree it, it would be nice if speed enforcement was applied at a much broader scale. Um, but unfortunately, the police department's resources are are constrained, and um, you know they they do what they can. I simply brought that up as a as a thing to state that, you know, there are other options that haven't really been employed is what I was stating. Understood. Your answer. I'd love to chime in um, real quick and get a little clarification. Are we, I'm, I was a few minutes late to the meeting. Are we talking about speed stuff for fairway or maple crest? or both? This is fairway drive uh, from Lebanon Pike up to Maple Crest. Okay, thank you so much. Then this meeting probably doesn't apply to me <laughs> since I don't live there. <laughs> and um, I got it. You say earlier that that would be up to those residents. Um, you, you are probably correct. Oh. You're, you're of course welcome to stay on if, if you'd like. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a great night. You too. Um, does anybody want to, or final, final questions before we move on? Well, uh, I do have a concern about, you know, the fact that there is a fire station down there at the uh, corner of Fairway and Lebanon Pike, and they typically use Lebanon Pike when they are called, but a lot of times they do come down fairway. How does, how have um, traffic calming devices like the speed humps, the speed bumps or rumble strips or whatever, how, has that affected their ability to um, answer calls when they have to also go over or around certain obstructions or slowing devices? Um, the really short answer is is no. And I'd like to 
put a pin in that and discuss it while we're talking about the different devices, um, since we'll have some visuals to put put it towards, I, I suppose. Okay. Okay. Um, if nobody else um, has any objection, we can move on to talking about the toolkit. Uh, I, I wanted to add a little asterisk to that um, that question that was just asked. Um, my friend, uh, a close friend actually, is a paramedic driver, stated uh, to me that they will look for routes around roads with speed humps and speed bumps because oftentimes you can go through those roads faster than coming around the speed bump, speed hump areas. And that's something he stated to me directly when we were talking about this the other day. He, he should. Um, all right, so let's move on. So kind of alluded to this um, a few times already, but NDOT's bread and butter in the traffic calming program is speed cushions. These are uh, modular rubber devices, um, and they are actually specifically designed to reduce the impact to emergency response vehicles. Often they have a wider wheelbase, so usually in the neighborhood of, of six feet or so, and these are, are six feet in, in width. So essentially the aim is for a larger vehicle like an ambulance or a fire truck to be able to you know, kind of straddle these and, and drive over them with minimal impact, not none, but um, not as much as a, a, a personal vehicle would. They're three inches tall. Um, Lengths vary, so we can do short ones. Those are seven feet, medium, 10 and a half, and, and the longer ones are, are 14. We usually save the 14 foot ones for higher speed roads. So if the speed limit were, were like 30 or so, we'd, we'd probably do a 14. So we're not um, having a change in speed too, too much from what, what we're expecting drivers to do. Speed tables, these are kind of the speed cushions on steroids. Um, NDOT has, has moved away from these specifically because they are indifferent to emergency vehicles and, and they do affect the, you know, the speeds that a fire truck or an ambulance can go over. Uh, they're still only three inches high. They're, they're generally longer, like the 14 foot length. The advantages here is that they, you know, simply are just harder to um, ignore. So if you were maneuvering down a road on a on a motorcycle, for instance, you wouldn't have a whole lot of trouble with with speed cushions, but um, speed tables are are better for controlling that kind of activity. Um, so, what are the impacts to uh, local speeds? Uh, these are vertical measures, so speed tables and speed cushions. Uh, and NDOT has done some some data analysis and, and study on installations that they've done already. And they're showing an average speed reduction of about nine miles per hour. And then that reduction actually increases when we're talking about the, the 85th speed. So those are the, the people who are like really speeding down the road. They are still needing to slow down to about 25 miles an hour on, on average. So that's part of the reason that NDOT is excited about these. They're they're shown to be working and, and reducing speeds in neighborhood residential streets. So that's generally why they're the most common application of the traffic calming program. Outside of vertical measures, there's a few other tools we have in our tool belt, um, radar feedback signs. We've probably all seen these around. Essentially, it's a, a solar powered sign that will measure a person's speed and, and flash at them or turn red if they're, they're going over it. So like we've sort of touched on before, these don't actually affect a person's physical ability to go quickly, but a lot of people who speed aren't aren't doing so maliciously or, you know, like really racing or anything. It's easy if you live in a hilly place or or somewhere with wide roads, you can you can often get going faster than you really want to. So these can help for for that group and just remind everyone, you know, how fast they're supposed to be going and, and give some feedback on how quickly they are. So similarly, NDOT has done some studying on how effective these are, and, and they'll still see an, a reduction of a six to seven miles an hour. So they don't do nothing, but, but they're not preferred. Generally, we save these for 
areas that are too hilly for speed cushions or you know some other reason why a vertical measure wouldn't wouldn't be a good idea we can also do narrowing so like i alluded to earlier when when roads are really wide it's it's more comfortable to drive fast so everyone's comfortable you know going 60 70 miles on the interstate there's plenty of room you can see way out ahead of you um, whereas on a really narrow windy, windy road most people aren't uh, aren't comfortable going as fast so while these don't physically narrow the road they actually are shown to have the effect of of narrowing a road basically uh, adding white stripes to the edge is a way to subtly encourage people to slow down and i know it it won't work on you know people who are just flouting the lawn and using your street as a racetrack, but on average they do reduce speeds. Uh, traffic circles, these are pretty rare and, and likely not appropriate for fairway specifically, but um, if there's like a really large intersection that people are, are whipping around, these can help. Um, especially in situations where, where stop signs are like being ignored and, and people are just blasting through. The trick is here, they have certain geometry requirements that we're designing to. So you need a pretty massive intersection for, for one to be considered, unfortunately. Uh, bulb outs and chicanes, these are other intersection and um, pavement, marking, pavement marking related measures. We've probably, seen them around uh, sparsely they're not n dots go to and, and generally we don't prefer to propose them right out of the gate but a bulb out essentially takes a wide intersection applies paint and delineators to turn it into a narrow one that has the effect of reducing the speed that one is is capable of making a turn at and if there was like high volume pedestrian crossings it can reduce the crossing distance so there there are a few benefits there and then chicanes basically takes a straight road and turns it into a wavy one that discourages speeds just because you are needing to pay attention and make maneuvers to stay in the lanes rather than you know zoning out and, and hitting the gas um so that's everything that we do in the traffic calming program we do like to direct everyone to resources that are outside the traffic calming program since there are a number of concerns that have been been named already so hub nashville that's kind of the catch-all if anybody doesn't know this is a really useful app and phone number that can be used to address a wide variety of you know public related issues so it could be anything from stormwater requesting a stop sign requesting a speed limit reduction um, even reporting like improperly parked vehicles and, and things like that. So it's it's a very versatile uh, portal for interacting with the city of Nashville. Uh, walking and biking related, a really great person to contact is Anna Dearman. Um, the walk and bike program in NDOT has really built up in the last few years. So there the point of contact for like the sidewalks program and, and bikeways things like that and then the beautification commission we also point people toward jd lane um, that's everything from adopt a street uh, neighborhood cleanups community service kind of that that sort of uh, thing so this is another um, opportunity we can sort of pause and, and discuss some of the measures we talked about earlier if anyone has questions about um, some of the measures that we're proposing. Well, you've talked about, um, you know, the speed humps or speed bumps, and and I see the benefit of some of those depending on the height and how much you're going to have to slow down, because I've seen I've seen some experienced some, for example, on Curry Road, over in South Nashville. That, I mean, you have to come close to like five, 10 miles an hour to get over those, or you're going to hurt your car. Did you mention anything, I may have missed it, about like rumble strips or squares that can be possibly put before and after uh, speed limit signs that 
kind of like you'd find on the interstate if you start drifting? Uh, so those are, well, I'll, I'll address that in a couple um, stages. So this is generally what we're seeing the effect of vertical measures on, on speeds. So the current, and I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit, the traffic for calming program has been around for a while. I'm not familiar with the Curry Road project, but there have been a variety of different approaches um, taken on Nashville streets over the last decade or so. Right now we're using the traffic logics modular rubber speed Ooh. cushions. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about. Yeah, so 22 miles an hour seems to be the average speed that, that people are going over these. Um, it may be more comfortable if you're going five and a little less if you're going 10, but most of the time we're seeing these get people down to the speed limit, but not an excessive uh, speed reduction. Um, the second part of your question was regarding rumble strips. And um, so there are two kinds. There's the rumble asphalt treatment yeah. that, that are on interstates. Those are generally for you know, warning people if they were drifting out of their lane or drifting off of the road. That's not really something that we'll see a lot on neighborhood streets, and and it is an application you have to do while you're while you're paving. Um, there are thermoplastic uh, rumble strips that can be put down. However, those are generally reserved for warning drivers of an upcoming hazard or something specific that we want them to look out for so the perfect like a, example is like a, or something yeah yeah like a crosswalk um so if there was an uncontrolled crossing in front of the school for instance that would be a really good place to yeah, put those absolutely. rumble strips you know get somebody's attention if they were drifting off um but generally for signs we we don't apply them just to like direct somebody to look up at the sign i mean they just they don't quite match up as far as treatments go okay uh, this is Jim Oldham again. Uh, on my end, and I'm near the uh, crossings. I'm about the second house up, and that's a really bad spot for people. Uh, we've got a couple of motorcycles. We've got uh, people that come in on the weekends, and that is like a drag strip. I'm about at second gear uh, is where my house is, and it really gets awful. On the other hand, also during uh, certain peak times, um, I've been a close miss a few times crossing the sidewalk over to my house. And some of it, I think, is just people uh, certainly ignoring anything that's near 25 miles an hour. But uh, we do have people that come through and do use the neighborhood for a racetrack. Yeah, we unfortunately see that in a lot of places. Um, the good news is the physical barriers of the speed cushions tend to be the best shot we have at affecting that issue. Um, I don't think people really enjoy treating uh, streets which have had traffic calming as as racetracks. Uh, so hopefully we would see a reduction in that kind of behavior. But um, that, that is that is an unfortunate reality that we do live with. And, and just so everyone that you probably have noticed, I've, I've pulled up the concept for fairway drive. I figure while we're doing a question and answer, it might be helpful to have the, the diagram of the street, um, you know, pulled up. Is everyone okay with me just doing a quick introduction on, on the specific plan? Sure. Okay. Um, so these yellow trapezoids all probably figured out are the speed cushions. Um, we're looking to do about four sets of them. The fairway is pretty narrow. so what we'll likely do is just one in each lane so we don't have one in the middle and, and two on the sides but just one in the center of each of the you know north and southbound lanes and we we found a good spot to put four of them uh we will have one in between these stop signs that's not a typical placement i mean these are stop signs that are pretty close together but as we've heard already um not everyone listens to the stop signs so there's a a pretty good reason um, to warrant those, especially given the, the school. So with this up and having heard about the 
program in general, do we have any questions about the design specifically or, or more discussion about the measures we're proposing? One thing I've noticed, um, for example, up by McGavick High School, where there are little spade humps uh, by the golf course, is that until something is put on each side of the road, people will, you know, will actually swerve into the grass, uh, teenagers in particular, but they will actually swerve into the grass to avoid going over those. You know, I don't know if it's just to, in, in spite of them to show that they can do it, but Lower there have actually been, yeah, you know, actually been, phys had to be physical barriers uh, placed on each side of the road so that you can't do that. Yeah, we that. we have noticed that behavior as well, and as as concerning um, as it is, what what we can do is place the signs that note the speed cushions. So yeah. I don't know if we had uh, pictures of these, but um, each set of speed cushions comes with some signs that will warn drivers that that's coming up. Mm -hmm. So if it's in a spot where we think somebody's going to be able to maneuver around it, what we'll do is place the sign even with the cushion and have it hug the road a little closer than you, you might with a speed limit sign or something like that. Yeah. And and we don't we don't see a lot of people just charging through signs. Like I think most people are gonna avoid doing that so they don't ding up their car, but it's something that we have um noticed happen unfortunately and that's our working solution for the time being okay how much does that damage to vehicles get offset by the city does the city pay back uh drivers whose vehicles are damaged you mean if you like ran off the road and hit a sign no no no. i'm talking about like like it's it, these these speed tables speed cushions speed bumps speed blocks whatever people call the things they're pretty well documented to cause wear and tear and trouble on vehicles I still pay the same taxes as everybody else, and then I have to pay my, repair my vehicle. Uh, I tow a trailer often. I don't know if you've ever gone through speed cushions on a with a trailer behind you, but that is about the closest thing to hell as you can get to. It's really irritating. That's so, a good point. Yeah, I absolutely cannot stand driving over speed bumps, tables, whatever, with a trailer. It is awful. Understood. Um, we definitely. I mean, I do not pay for, for people's repairs to their to their cars if, if they were driving over speed cushions. Um, any other questions or, or points of discussion regarding the design for fairway? All right. Um, so moving on, we're pretty close to the end here, but this flowchart is essentially a, a diagram of how this program works. So um, residents applied, we prioritized all of the applications and made our selection. Fairway um, was selected due to the high speeds, volumes, the metrics we talked about. Um, this red highlight, we are meeting number one. Um, Everyone on the street should have gotten a postcard in their mailbox announcing this date and time with an invite to the meeting. And um, we're, we're reviewing the program toolbox, draft design and everything. So based on the feedback we've received today, what we're going to do is, is refine the design, produce some construction plans, and then we'll schedule a second meeting to present, you know, the, the more fleshed out details of of the proposed traffic calming and then after that we'll have the opportunity to do an online ballot to decide if the residents of fairway drive are in favor of having traffic calming on their street um, a success is 66 percent of the residents who vote are favorable votes and um, if it should be less than that then you will not get vertical measures and, and we'll look toward other options. And then after that, um, you know, should it be successful, we'll order materials and, and get it in the queue for construction. 
Um, so everyone, thanks for your time. I'm here for questions. If, if we have them, uh, we can stay as, as long as we need to. Um, again, my name is David Greaves. I can be contacted at the email we're seeing on the screen. Gil Thomas is the program manager at NDOT. His, his email is, is gilthomas at nashville.gov. David, are you going to email this uh, uh, presentation, this meeting out? Um, it That is probably a good question for Gil. I don't think that he emails everyone for the, a link. the video. Um, I want to get have, to... Uh, oh, go ahead. I, want to, I want to get it to Jim Oldman, uh, Oldham, um, so he can get it out to his neighbors. Um, yeah, on, we we absolutely will have the video posted on YouTube, and we can let you know when that's okay. that's happened. I don't okay. think we have everyone on the streets like email address, but we have yours, and and we can make sure it gets to you. It's all good. It's on. Thank you. This is yeah. This is recorded. I'll I'll put it on. Jim, I'll email it to you. You can get it to your neighbors and we'll share it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Great. Um, well, if we don't have any questions, um, really appreciate all your time. We like doing these meetings because it helps us get a better picture of the neighborhood. I mean, y'all are the experts on what's going on on your street. And um, these are often really helpful to guide us in our design process and decision making. Um, if you haven't already, uh, check out NDOT's online presence. They're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And then trafficcalming.nashville.gov. That's this QR code. It has a lot of information about the program, and, and the website's been pretty successfully revamped in just the last year. So if you want to explore the map, applications, you know, see what streets have it already, um, and then just learn more about the tools, there's a lot of good stuff online there. Well, David, we appreciate your time and your effort with us. I actually live on Maple Crest Drive, but and I know one lady came on and, and figured it didn't have anything to do with her, but we all know people who live on Fairway. We are going to have to use it ourselves. You know, I, I have <clears> to <throat> I have to travel down Fairway myself. So it does affect even those of us who don't directly live on Fairway. And if it works out that it's a good, you know, situation that you've come up with, then hopefully we can have it expanded to some of the streets like Maple Crest, um, like Revere, possibly, where there's, there are similar problems. But, you know, I guess it's kind of the, the test street for the rest of us. And, and hopefully, because it is so widely used, you know, it can slow down traffic and even though there's a sidewalk all the way from Maple Crest down to Publix, um, you know, we, we are still affected if we're out in our car and people are coming along at 40, 45 miles an hour, which I have seen a lot of. So anyway, thank you. Yeah, of course, um, and, and absolutely agreed. I'll, I'll just touch on that a little bit. We, we recognize that installing traffic calming measures affects more people than just those that live on the street. Um, so we appreciate you coming out and, and offering your, your insights as well. Thank you. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? All right. Well, once again, thanks everyone um, and, and have a good rest of your, your night. All right. You too. Thanks everybody. Bye.